Each of those clips were captured using Waypoint missions on my Mini 4 Pro. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set all those up. The ability to create Waypoint missions is a powerful feature that allows you to capture footage that would be nearly impossible using manual controls. And this feature used to be reserved for larger drones like the Mavic 3 and more recently the Air 3. But now we have it on the Mini series with the Mini 4 Pro. I have just started to experiment with Waypoint missions on my Mini 4 and I must say there are a ton of settings available and it can almost be a bit overwhelming. But it doesn't have to be because you don't need to be adjusting every setting in every Waypoint mission. In fact, what I've realized is depending on what I'm trying to capture, there are only a few settings that I'm ever worried about in any particular mission. And there are some shortcuts when it comes to getting all the settings dialed in, which I will show you as I go through the examples in this video. So let's not waste any more time and jump into the first example. All right, the first example we're gonna look at is the bridge flyover and rotate. This is actually very easy to set up using waypoints, but there is no way I could fly this manually. The drone is flying in a straight path while changing elevation and rotating, all while the gimbal is tracking the subject, which is the bridge. So I'll fly to the location I wanna set up my first waypoint. I'll tap on the waypoint icon on the left side of the screen to bring up my waypoint menu. The location and altitude of the drone is all I care about here, so I'll get the drone into position and set my first waypoint. Now I will move to the location for my next waypoint, which is also the end of the mission. Once again, I'm only worried about the location and altitude. So once I'm in position, I will tap the plus sign to add the second waypoint. The next thing I'll set up is my global settings. I can access those by tapping on the three dots. And in here, I'll adjust the global speed, which is what I'll use for the mission. And I'll try eight meters per second, just so it's not going too fast for the rotation. In here, I also want to set the end of flight to hover. And if for some reason I lose signal, I'll set the on signal loss to continue. That way it will complete the mission even if it loses signal. Then the final step, which pulls it all together, I need to set my point of interest, which is the bridge. So I will line up the drone directly over the bridge along the flight path between my waypoints. Once I'm in position, I will select POI and tap the plus sign to add the point of interest. Just note, the point of interest is set to the location of the drone. So I want to go into the POI settings by tapping on the POI1. And since I don't want the point of interest to be the current altitude of the drone, I will adjust it down closer to the height of the bridge. Now I want to link my waypoints to the POI. To do this, I just select link waypoint. And now you can individually select waypoints by tapping on the waypoint numbers below, or in this case, I will just hit select all to select both waypoints. And now we're done. Oh, one last thing. I'll go into the first waypoint and set the camera action to start recording. And then I'll go into the second waypoint and set the camera action to stop recording. I can now save this waypoint mission by tapping on the paper icon, then tap save. And by selecting save as, it will create a new file that I can rename by tapping on the pen icon next to the file name. And now we're good to go. I'll just select next, then go and let it run the mission. So by setting the bridge as my point of interest for both waypoints, as the drone flies over the bridge, it will lower the gimbal to keep it in frame and then rotate as it passes the bridge and start raising the gimbal as it backs away to keep the bridge in the center of frame. And what this also does is create this reveal effect of the buildings and landscape as the gimbal raises up. So let's take a look and see how that turned out. Well, that was pretty awesome. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Kapanen and I make videos all about helping you capture and create better content. And if that's something that interests you, then you'll wanna subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming tips to help you with your content creation. All right, 
That last one was pretty easy, so now let's jump into the next example, where I'm going to use several waypoints, and I'm going to show you how to set this one up without even having the drone powered on. To do this, I just need to power on my RC2 controller, and on the bottom right, tap on Connection Guide. Then on the top right, select Camera View, and this takes you to the camera display, where you can now select waypoints by tapping on the icon. But first, I'll bring up the map view to find the location I want to set up my waypoint mission. Now that I'm at the location, I can start setting my waypoint mission by tapping on the waypoint icon, and then start setting my waypoints by tapping on the map where I want to set each point. I just want to add that it's very important when setting up a waypoint mission this way that you know the area because there could be plenty of obstacles that you don't see on the map. And I've explored this area thoroughly before doing this, so I know everything is clear where I'm setting these points. Don't worry if you don't get them perfect, you can reposition them after. To do this, simply place and hold your finger on the waypoint, then you can drag it around to get everything lined up as you want. Now that I have my waypoints set, if you notice they all have arrows on them and they are all currently positioned in the direction of travel because the heading is set to follow course. So I want to add a point of interest, and I can do that by selecting POI, then I will tap on the map where I want to set my point of interest. Now before we set that up, I just want to show you that you can change the map setting to a satellite or mixed view, just by tapping on the layer icon and then selecting the view you want. But I prefer the standard view. So I'll switch my view back, and now I'm going to set up my point of interest. I can either tap on the POI marker or the POI icon below to get into the settings. The first thing I want to adjust is the altitude, and I'm going to set it to 40 meters by moving the slider. Now I want to link my waypoints to the POI, so I'll tap on Link Waypoint, and then I can individually select waypoints below or in this case, I'll just tap on Select All to include all the waypoints. And now if you look at the arrows on the waypoints, they are all pointing at the POI. And if I go into the waypoint settings, the heading is now set to POI1 for all my waypoints. Now I want to adjust the altitude of my waypoints. So I will start with waypoint 1 and open the settings by tapping on the waypoint. I could have also selected the waypoint 1 icon below. Now I will select altitude and by using the slider adjust it to 40 meters. And since I want all my waypoints to be at the same altitude, I can tap on apply to all and then OK to confirm. And now all of my waypoints will be set to 40 meters. The next thing I want to set up is my global speed and I can do this by tapping on the three dots to open the global settings. Here I can adjust my global speed, which all my waypoints are currently set to by default, and I will set this to the max, which is 12 meters per second. Now I want to change the speed of the waypoints on the curb. I can do this by tapping on the waypoint I want to change, and you'll see the speed is currently set to global speed. If I select that, I can now switch it to custom, and then I can adjust the speed specifically for that waypoint. I will do the same for waypoints 4 and 5, and if I want, I can tap on the waypoint 4 icon below to select it instead of tapping on the waypoint marker. So I will set up these two waypoints as well. And now I'm going to set up my camera action, so I will go to waypoint 1. Select Camera Action and set it to Start Record. You will see below the waypoint marker, the red camera icon appear to indicate the Start Record action. Now I will go into waypoint 8 and set the camera action to Stop Record. And you will see the white camera icon appear, which indicates Stop Record. The last thing to set up is in the global settings. I will set the End of Flight action to Hover and the On Signal Lost to continue. 
This is important because likely at some point going behind the building, I will briefly lose signal. And now we're good to go. So I will just save it by tapping on the paper icon. Then by tapping on save, you get some options by selecting save as it creates a new file that you can rename. Okay, next step is to get the drone out to the location. So we'll switch over to that. So now that I'm at the location, I can open up the waypoint menu by tapping on the icon, then tap the paper icon to bring up my save missions and I will select the building orbit. Now that it's loaded, I want to make some final checks and that is to ensure my obstacle avoidance is on and check that my signal lost is set to return to home in case for some reason I completely lose signal. But if it does during the mission, it should continue at least to complete the mission. And that's it. Double check a few things and select next and tap go, then let it fly the mission. We'll skip over that, except I want to show you one thing. As the drone goes around the building, it does lose signal briefly, but since I had it set to continue on signal lost, that's what it did and quickly regained signal. There is a chance it would have stopped the mission at that point. Let's just have a quick look at that one. I actually did several variations of that one, adjusting the altitude of the POI above and below the altitude of the drone. So I'll also show you a few of those. So that was pretty cool. And now you can see by changing that one variable, the point of interest altitude, I was able to capture a variety of looks to that shot. And it was super simple. Once I had the flight path set with the start and finish so close together, I could run the mission, make that quick change and then start the mission again. I was able to do it several times on one battery. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at the last example, the dolly zoom or vertigo shot. And for this one, I used two waypoint missions, one for the fly-in and another one for the actual zoom part. So let's take a look. So for the first part of this shot, I'm just setting up an intro for the dolly zoom. So I wanna fly in towards my subject, which is the building. To do this, I wanna line this up so the top edge of the building is in the center of frame and fly towards it, keeping that same spot in the center of the frame. I wanna set my first waypoint here. So I'll go into waypoints and tap the plus sign to set the first point. And now I'll fly in and get lined up with where I want to start the waypoint mission for the dolly zoom. And I'll set this as my second waypoint. To finish setting this up, I will go into waypoint one and set the camera action to start record and go into waypoint two and set the camera action to stop record. Now I'm also going to set the hover to three seconds on both waypoints one and two, mainly just to test out the hover setting. Now I'll go into the global settings and set the speed to max 12 meters per second and set the end of flight to hover because I'm going to start my second waypoint mission from here. I'll just set the on signal loss to continue and I'll quickly save this and then I'll fly close to the starting point before I press go just to speed things up. As the drone flies to the first waypoint, you can see on the map, it shows the altitude of the waypoint and the red camera to indicate start recording. And as it flies towards waypoint two, you can see the marker shows the altitude again, and now a white camera to indicate stop recording. So now I'm going to start a new waypoint mission here, and I'll set this as my first waypoint. And what I'm going to do is fly up and back along the same path I just flew in on. And then I'll zoom all the way in and get everything lined up. So when I set the waypoint here, it will also set the zoom at three times. And since the first waypoint was at one time zoom, as the drone flies up and back, it will also zoom in. 
and to do all of that manually and synchronized would be incredibly hard. The whole idea here is to try and keep the subject as still as possible in the frame for the entire shot. So once I have that all lined up, I'll set my second waypoint, and now I need to finish setting up my waypoints. I'll add the hover again and set the first waypoint to start record and the second waypoint to stop record. The last thing to set up is the global settings. I'll adjust the speed to max and set the end of flight to hover and the on signal loss to continue. I'm not going to bother saving this one, I'll just hit go and let it run the mission. And now let's take a look and see how that one turned out. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope it was helpful, and if you enjoyed it, please give that like button a click and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this with tips to help you capture and create captivating content. And there should be a video up there if you want to go check it out, and I'll see you on the next one.